Hey, good morning, Canada. So today we're taking a look at public art installations. Yeah. Ben and Lens, I have to ask you, do you have a favorite public art installation? I, whether I it's do. In Toronto there's, or? A, there's, a, there's a park here in Toronto yeah. right by the Flatiron Building that mm -hmm. has this beautiful old um, uh, fountain, and yeah. they added these dogs to it. Mm -hmm. so, Getting a lot of nods in the, yeah, in the it, newsroom. To me, beautiful. it's the most wonderful, uh, the, it's, it's so charming. It puts yeah. a smile on my face every yeah. time I see it. Yeah, yeah. There's, I would say mine is um, some graffiti art that I've seen around several cities mm -hmm. in this country. Uh, nothing in particular but when I go by it, I'm like, ah, oh, yes. Does it inspire and you? Can you? Tell, you, you can get... tell it's properly, like it's commissioned. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, there's a difference, right? Uh, yeah. But the ones that are, are commissioned, some of them are just gorgeous. Awesome, I love to hear that. Reason why we're asking is because people in Montreal right now are divided. Mm. Because this summer will be the last for the installation in Montreal's Gay Village. The rainbow balls were installed in 2011, and the artist says, it's time for something else. Yeah. I'm sorry, I, I've, I've walked down that street mm -hmm. uh, in the middle of the summertime. It's it, it, unbelievable to look up and see yeah. that. It's unbelievable. It's so, such a popular it's tourist so destination. It's so sad that it's going away. Oh, yeah. that's too bad. So while this particular art installation is managed by the Merchants Association, we wanted to take a look at other public art installations across the country, especially ones that have drummed up a lot of conversation. I just love how you're putting that. Yeah, because there is conversation. Some are really good and some, some people, people do not like. Exactly. Yeah. So let's start off with one that maybe a lot of people liked, and that was the Toronto Sun. I mean, it's made Still its is. wave. Yeah, it was installed during the Pan Am Games. It's yeah. from, you know, it's a legacy of that. It would cost $100,000 to construct, and after the games, it was so popular that the city decided to spend the extra money to refurbish it and to make it a permanent installation. And you know, a couple months after it was installed, they tabulated some numbers and found out that there were 122 million um, social media uh, interactions with this yeah. sign. So, I mean, and that's the thing. I mean, you hear the cost of what it what it uh, took to make this thing and keep it there. But then what is the price tag on advertising for the city? Mm -hmm. Because so many people have taken their picture right. with this. And they've posted it for the world to see. It's a good, it's a good thought there. $100,000 is a lot to you and me. To a city like Toronto, yeah, the third largest deal. city in North America, if we can't swallow that for the benefit of the image of our city, we got some real problems. Right. Yeah. But let's talk about a more controversial one, which yeah. was the rubber duck. Do you oh, remember this? It crisscrossed yeah. Don't say that in front of Kelsey, because Kelsey is saying, <laughs> it's not a rubber duck. Well, it cost the taxpayers about 120 k and it was to celebrate Canada and Ontario 150, and it moved right across the province to various towns, so <laughs> St. Marie, Midland, and for example. And you know what? At the time, the opposition PCs, the Conservatives in Ontario, were staunchly against using the funds for this <laughs> because they said, what does a duck have anything to do with Ontario history? What the duck, However, right? yeah. as it traveled across towns across this province, it really brought a lot of people out to each waterfront. That's true, and did. many towns, because I covered Midland when I was a reporter at CTV Barry, use it as a, a way to not only have a festival around it, but it drew a lot of economic benefits. I want to go to Calgary, though, for mm -hmm. Calgary's traveling life because this one is one that stirred a lot of controversy in Calgary. It oh, costed look. nearly $500,000, <laughs> and even Mayor Nenshi huh. admitted it was awful and terrible. This is literally right <laughs> as you exit the airport, the you see this giant round blue circle. It'd be way it's cooler if the plane could fly through it on right. your yeah. way. So why did this happen in Calgary? Why? Well, because Calgary, their art program, it requires any public infrastructure build that 1% of that money goes towards installing a public art project. So, so they, they had extended, to spend the money. Well, they extended 94th <laughs> Avenue, and then part of that was, I mean, they came out with this. But each city across but, this country has their own sort of policy. In St. John's, uh, Newfoundland, they dedicate about $20,000 each year. But because of the recession that's been happening in Newfoundland, they've restricted that but, for the ne next two years in terms Brandon, of their budget. there is having a policy of, of funding public art, which is great, I think a lot yeah. of people agree. And then there's funding silliness. Yeah. And that big blue circle yeah. to me is silly. But now, sometimes but it's hit and miss, right? It's about what's the space in between. So. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, it's not so well, much the circle doing this, but like the circle the pushing out. That's right. right. The yeah. negative space, mm -hmm. right. So we showed you a few examples, Canada. We want to hear what examples that you may have. So here's your hashtag, your take question. Yeah, use that hashtag. Are you in favor of public art, or do you think it's a waste of money? Hit us up on social media. We want to know right after the break. More news and weather.